honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the sportstuff.com. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Double Twist. Thank you once again for joining me today. Well, yeah, it's raining outside. It's cleanup season. I apologize for the lack of shows of late, but again, that's because of cleanup season. Got to kind of get that out of the way, and then everything will be fine. We can have a weekly show again. It's just the same thing every year, so <laughs> obviously a lot of you are used to it by now. It's a rainy day and Tuesday, and uh, well, uh, since it's raining and way too wet to do anything, Tim Rules Explosion is back on the air. It's just like I said on the last show, and you had the rainy days and Mondays, all that kind of stuff. Well, here's a rainy day and a Tuesday. It was yesterday's rainy day is, uh, for the Brave the Wild show. Opportunity for that one, because that one was way behind. Okay, point made. Let's uh, get caught up with the Timberwolves a bit here. Going to brush things with a broad stroke in terms of we're going to get caught up. I'm not going to go heavy into detail game by game by game by game, because it's not a weekly show. It's been a couple weeks. Not too far in the past, but a little bit. Uh, it was, what, the 20th of October last time around. Now it's the 6th of November. Very significant day in the history of the United States, possibly. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. And I'll just leave that as is. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves were 1-1 one one at the time. I had us winning, beating the Dallas Mavericks. We didn't. Uh, the drama still continues. Frickin' Jimmy Butler's still here. And there is just some weird stuff going on. So we'll just kind of continue on that conversation for the most part. I suppose we'll have three segments. Yeah, <laughs> this first segment, getting caught up. Second segment, I'll preview a teeny tiny bit. It'll probably be fairly short because I'm only going to preview like a week like a week ahead or so, a couple games because I don't know when the next show is going to be. And then the third segment will be a, probably a fairly busy fan interaction. Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Still no audio submissions of any kind, unfortunately. As of this moment, the Timberwolves have lost three in a row. They had won two in a row against the Lakers and the Jazz. Very impressive night for... A guy by the name of Derek Rose. But then you had games like Milwaukee. And really giving up 140 points against Dallas on the 20th itself was pretty lame. You had a nice little breakout night for Josh Okogie on the 22nd. We'll get to there for a second here. 101-91 victory. And then we'll talk about Jimmy Budhead here in a couple seconds. Well, the defense was good. Andrew Wiggins was missing time. So, Andrew Wiggins had to miss time, unfortunately. Uh, of course, during the during this game, he was only able to play eight minutes. A, a thigh bruise, believed to be like a quad bruise, that type of thing. Thigh bruise. He only was able to play eight minutes. Josh Okogi debuted officially, not in the preseason, but regular season at long last. And you see the energy. You see the inconsistency. His jump shot's not the best. One of six in his debut. But 12 points, the energy, the defense, and the athleticism is very evident. And not a single soul is complaining about this young man being a part of the rotation. And he needs to be a regular part of the rotation. And generally speaking, he has been, despite Wiggins coming back and Butler coming back in some games and playing when he wants to play. Jeff Teague has missed extended time of late as well, unfortunately. So that's kind of that kind of is what it is. And you're seeing Derrick Rose starting at point guard. You're seeing Tyus Jones start on occasion. We got a knee contusion, as Marcus the Forecaster used to call it. Contusion. We used to have fun with that for Jeff Teague. So, battered and bruised. That's why they're wearing blue jerseys, because it's their black and blue, man. Yep, well, they're black and blue, all right. The, the thigh bruise and then the knee bruise. Knee contusion. Ah, oh, that's got to hurt. God, good thing it's nothing like, you know, like a cracked kneecap or something. That's like freaking season ending, that type of stuff. Or anything else that could have been really bad. I remember last year, I mean, Jeff Teague is one durable son of a gun, so it's hard to believe he's actually missed a couple of games the last couple of years, but it's okay. Um, he is a durable, durable guy. I have nothing against him whatsoever. Nice to see Josh Okogie, though, being a part of things. Uh, Tyus Jones started on fire from downtown, and then he's kind of caught up a bit, kind of come back down to reality. Jimmy Butler has played eight of the 11 games so far, and again, playing when he wants to play. We'll kind of leave that as is. Carl Anthony Towns, still known as the top three-point specialist on the roster, which is funny, considering he's the center. But uh, again, it wouldn't be bad to acquire some type of a big man, be it Hassan Whiteside. Clint Capella in my dreams, maybe it would be nice. <clears throat> I talk about him every show, don't I? <laughs> Clint Capella, uh, I would, wouldn't mind getting a, 
the guy in the Clipper land there that I talked about earlier. And of course, that guy's name is Marsan Gartat. He'd be a nice addition, but again, his age isn't a good thing. It's all, it's all because when Pekovic did play a couple of games at center before he had to retire forcibly, uh, Carl Anthony Towns was freed. I mean, he blocked more shots, his rebounds were higher, and he got to shoot more threes. So that was pretty cool. And those of you out there that think I'm only a hater of the three-point shot, this and that, of course I'm not. I recognize its value because of the zone defense and the different style of play in the NBA in this modern age. Of course, I recognize the need for guys to move around, be unselfish with the ball, and of course, and uh, you know, catch and shoot threes and all that. So I just don't like the Warriors themselves. I don't like their attitude, but I like uh, sure the style of play is okay. I just don't like the players on that team very much, except for Clay Thompson, who's the ultimate player out there. He's basically the anti Derrick Rose when you put it all together. Derrick Rose had a wonderful game the other night, but he dribbled about 500 times, and that's like a, a pretty accurate estimation, whereas uh, Clay Thompson is the kind of guy who'll dribble maybe 15 times and he can score 50 points, that type of thing, and, and his super 50-point type of game. That's how things go there. We'll talk about the Warriors a teeny bit later because we played those guys. Those guys. I just I love them so much. Can you tell? <sighs> well, Andrew Wiggins has missed three games. But he's back, and he's okay, and he's averaging about 17 a game, and Derrick Rose is actually averaging more than him, but, well, when you score 50 points in a game, of course your numbers are going to be higher. He's at 17.4 a game at the moment. He's even hitting almost 37% from downtown, which is good for his standards because Derrick Rose is not known as a three-point shooter. Unfortunately, he's a gunner, and that's kind of what it is. But, uh, oh well, it was a fun, fun performance the other night. When we talk about the Utah Jazz game, going to kind of slowly catch up here again. The Toronto game was entertaining, but of course, no Andrew Wiggins, 112-105 loss. And then let's go to the Bucks game on the 26th. Jimmy Butler is uh, playing when he wants to play again. The same old story, um, general soreness, this and that. It's just a bunch of bull. And then the other night on Sunday night, it's the Portland Trailblazers precautionary rest. It's just, you just want to go on a rant and I'll continue on that. Jimmy played against the Bucks, but he didn't try. He didn't even try. Like 24 point, uh, minutes in the game, nobody played well. The Wolves ended up losing by 30. The fan base was booing them lustily and well deserved. Uh, Cadiz base Jop got his uh, debut, but what fun is that? He just got a rebound. That's all he did. He just got a rebound in about six minutes. Lou Dang had his Timberwolves debut and scored four points and had five rebounds, but again, meaningless. He played the whole fourth quarter in a meaningless uh, washout. 28 to 28 fourth quarter. But a 125-95 thrashing on a Friday night in Target Center. Against an undefeated team, to be fair. Milwaukee Bucks at the time 5-0 and with that victory. But uh, I'm sorry. This is <laughs> clearly something's wrong here. Obviously. Can, can, can we put it together what it is? Could it be possibly the fish rots from a head down? Could it be possible that ignoring a problem, literally ignoring it, and just kind of going on it every day, like, it's, it's okay, it's tolerable, you know, it's just precautionary rest, it's general soreness, and, well, he missed training camp, you know? I mean, he missed training camp because he was just so busy being such a nice guy, like, demanding a trade and not showing up. So, he's just such a nice guy. I love Jimmy, you know? We all love Jimmy here in Target Center, here in Minneapolis. It's okay, you know, it, it is what it is. We appreciate the time he's giving us, despite the fact, you know, he's being a complete, total, you know, fill in the blanks. Just drop any F-bomb, whatever you want to say. But <laughs> we uh, <clears throat> we appreciate the time he's giving us because, you know, we're on borrowed time, so let's make the most of it. You know, come on, keep your chin up and uh, let's feel okay about this. It's okay. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, right? It's not raining outside or anything. Oh, wait, it is. And it's been raining on Target Center um, pretty much since sometime last year when Jimmy Butler and all them. Jimmy Butler was already making a jackass of himself. We just didn't know it at the time. Maybe some of us did. Uh, Tom Thibodeau's been making a jackass of himself pretty much since the beginning of last year. <sighs> and completely ignoring a problem. Just letting it go. Just letting it slide. And Carl Anthony Towns clearly is not the same guy. Carl does need to suck it up. I agree about that. You need to suck it up and still be the best player on this team regardless, or at least the second best player, regardless if Jimmy Butler wants to be here or not, regardless if Jimmy Butler is still here or not. Carl still needs to be what he's supposed to be, and that's a franchise power forward center type player, but unfortunately he's not really been that, with a couple of exceptions here and there. Um, But the situation completely being ignored and 
precautionary rest. I, I, I just can't put it to words. How, how can you take yourself seriously as a professional organization doing this type of thing? Just go away, Jimmy. Go away. I mean, remember when the Wolves acquired Mark Blunt years ago? And we just said, you know, for the second time, by the way, and we just said, don't bother suiting up. Basically, let your contract run out because it was the last couple months of his contract. That type of thing. He probably didn't want to be here and we didn't want him and this and that. That was the second tenure for Mark Blunt. Remember the first tenure, he was just spectacular, right? He had a couple of good games, but (laughs) Jimmy Butler shouldn't even be suiting up for this team. And I understand you want to stay healthy so you can be healthy for your next team rather than, uh, you know, tear a meniscus again or something. But uh, why even play him at all then? Just go away. Go away. Go back to Texas or wherever the heck you want to go. Hang out in Los Angeles or whatever the hell you want to do. But what's the point of this? Please, somebody, please, oh God, please bring some sanity to this organization. Tell me what the hell is going on because it don't make sense, Joe. It doesn't make sense. Uh, And this game uh, basically solidified that in so many ways. It amplified it in, uh, in a million ways. Are the Milwaukee Bucks 30 points better than the Minnesota Timberwolves? Uh, no, they're not. For Jimmy Butler to come out and say precautionary rest and general body soreness, this is all I got to say about all that. Oh, there's a difference. Shut up! And liar. You liar, you liar! Just get the hell out! Go back where the hell you came from. Enough already. End it. Just get the hell out. Go back where the hell you came from. If it's the Chicago Bulls. If it's the Clippers, if it's Texas, just go back where the hell you came from, Jimmy. It's okay. No offense, and please, listeners, don't take offense to me saying, go back where you came from, because, no, we just, <laughs> you know what I mean here. He needs to get the hell out of this town. And if you are if you think otherwise, I'm confused. I won't even say you're not a Timberwolves fan. I'd say you're a delusional Timberwolves fan, which, of course, there are many delusional fans of every team in the league. So, welcome to sports. Fans are delusional, um, and, well... Luckily, most of the listeners of this show, I would say, are not delusional because you haven't turned me off yet, hopefully. (laughs) I'm not a pompous expert. If anybody actually believes that, they're crazy. I'm not pompous, and I don't consider myself an expert, so look at it that way. I consider myself a fan who's extremely knowledgeable, who's been around for, um, you know, the better part of 30 years now. So look at it that way. It could have been longer, but I just wasn't into sports in the late 80s as much as I should have been other than the Twins, Um, but who cares? Why am I even mentioning that? (laughs) Games like this, here it is. I mean, this right here, this is the symbol of the situation with the Timberwolves. I mean, you don't lose games by, you don't lose the games by 30 points at home on Friday night against the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks are a bad matchup, but it ain't that bad, okay? You're not playing the 96 Bulls. You're not playing the 96 Bulls, and even the Timberwolves played fairly well against that team on occasion. I mean, this is just like, ah, you get the idea. Let's move on. Denver Nuggets are 9-1, and one, by the way. Hmm, Utah's 4-6, and six, so I guess I shouldn't feel so bad for all the Ruby Obos out there that think he's God Almighty. Okay, Ricky Ruby, you know what I mean? I don't have anything ma- majorly against the guy. I just don't think he's God Almighty, that's all. I don't think he's the Spanish Johnson. I don't think he's Spanish Johnson out there, okay? Let's move on. LeBron James and the Lakers come to town and Vince Germano's club, Stu Benson's club, Kalen Woods, all of you guys out there in Australia that love the Lakers, I love you right back. All the love returning your direction. Fun game, entertaining, 124 to 120. Jimmy Butler played when he wanted to play, and that's good. At least he showed up for this one on one Monday night on the 29th, and he had 32 points against Braun, and Carl Anthony Towns looked like a franchise player other than being a little bit sloppy with five turnovers. He had four. He added four blocks in the game and all that. It was fun. Derrick Rose, though, again, too much of a gunner. I like him, but man, sometimes he's, he just forces up shots. He's got a little J.J. Barea in him. Luckily, he's got a little more pedigree than old J.J., but again, similar. He likes to pound the ball and likes to just hurl up shots from here and there. Not from downtown so much, just mid-range and kind of wacky, wild layups. Ah, oh, God, last night's game against the Clippers, by the way. Mm. Jimmy Butler couldn't have looked more lazy, lazy on one of his layups. Mr. Hardworking himself, Mr. Mister, Dig Your Feet In and Show Me What You Got. You are a softie, you're a wimp, you're a pussy, you suck. I'm the toughest guy in town, I'm the hardest worker ever, and I put up the laziest bleeping layup ever when the game wasn't over yet. And it, it was like, eh, it was literally just eh. <laughs> I almost had to laugh last night watching that game. 
that, Jimmy? I mean, just make it more obvious. Can, can you just, you know, like in real rolling the, ah, uh, it's just, I'll get to the towel thing in a minute. Who cares? You know what I mean? Who cares? At least the Wolves beat the Lakers, though. It's fun. But, oh, gosh darn it, it's going to get broken up. You know, it's just a tease. Just go. I don't, you know what I mean? Just go. <laughs> so we beat so we beat the Lakers and Jimmy had 32 points. That's great. I'm more excited about Carl doing well and Okogi and guys like that. Because Jimmy doesn't want to be here. And even if he's here the rest of the year, I don't give a damn what his numbers are. I, I want his numbers to be 0 and DNP. Coach's decision. Coach's decision. That's what I want from Jimmy Butler. That's what I want. President of Basketball Operations, Joey Owijan, calls Jimmy Butler's agent and says, go home and go away. We will do the best we can to trade you as soon as possible, but stay the Mickey Frick out of our organization for the rest of your Mickey Frickin' life. What do you think of that? That's President of Basketball, Joey Owijan. Stay out! And let's move on. Utah Jazz... Derek Rose joins Mo Williams and Corey Brewer as guys that usually don't start, but uh, for our team, even though slightly different, uh, slight, slightly different resume, I suppose, than Corey Brewer and Mo Williams. But uh, unfortunately, at this stage of his career, Derek Rose, more of a spark, energy kind of guy, like Mo Williams and Corey Brewer, he joins them in the 50-point club. It's very exciting and very cool. The worst part is, can I say this? Can I please be negative Nancy for a half second, and I'll jump right back in the positivity how many games was this? How many games was this again? It was one game, right? The good news is, though, <laughs> for one night, compared to last bleep in April, when Ricky Rubio tore this team a new one, along with the rest of his club, the Wolves put up 128 points against the Gritty Jazz, who are 4-6 and six at the moment. At least they were at the time. Yeah, they're still 4-6. and six. Uh, Ricky Rubio... <laughs> I only managed five points. <laughs> I'm sorry. He only managed five points and six turnovers. He had more turnovers than points in the game. And the other guy who happened to play point guard for the Wolves, that we wish he was our point guard back in 2008, wearing the number one back then. Unfortunately, things just didn't work out in that draft because we just didn't get the number one pick. But yeah, Derek Rose, 50 points. He attempted 31 shots to get there, but still, it's over 50%. Four of seven from downtown. Derrick Rose actually hitting a couple threes. Even Wiggins' three-point shots getting a teeny bit better. He had a respectable game. Couple steals, six rebounds. Yeah, Wiggins is actually rebounding a little bit this year. So, yes, thank you. Carl, 16 rebounds and 28 points in the game. Derrick Rose, the big 5-0. And Josh Akogi. Josh Akogi bringing that energy, only attempting five shots and 10 points. I mean, did somebody say efficiency? See, so you look at Wiggins, 17 attempts, 19 points. Is that efficient? How about 5 to 10? That's a bad, That's more efficient. So that's the Joey efficiency uh, ratio there. Pals, you know Joey efficiency ratio. Uh, fun game. Awesome. Entertaining. Derrick Rose got to the line. He attempted 11, made 8, blah, blah, blah. But generally 50 points. Dribbled the ball everywhere, but he was making most of his shots, and he had so much energy. But the problem is, again, poor Derrick. <laughs> uh, you know how he looks a lot older than he is? He probably feels a lot older than he is, too. It's just that when he gets on the court, it's, just, it's that energy, that energy bug, that that energizer bunny gets in him, and it's beautiful. But then when he gets off the court, it's kind of like me a little bit in terms of like I get on that court and I just float on air. I'm so excited, and then you step off, and it's like, okay, I'm kind of sore right now. Wow, that hurt. That's kind of what it's like, and unfortunately, that was the case with Derrick Rose because. You didn't see quite the performance since then, though last night against the Clippers. He kind of brought it back a little bit. Some wacky shots, but generally a good game. And it's kind of cool seeing Derrick Rose as a point guard. Though, of course, he was point guard of the Knicks, too. But he did average 18 points a game with the Knicks. So let's not forget that. He still can play the game. It's just a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit rough around the edges, but uh, still can play a bit. A wonderful game for the Timberwolves. Uh, Donovan Mitchell did try to match a bit here and there. But certainly not efficient. He missed a lot of shots, though. Three of five from downtown. That's good. But generally speaking, Donovan missed. Uh, missed Donovan mitched. <laughs> yeah, he bitched all right. He missed a lot of shots down the stretch. Uh, generally speaking, only 10 of 24. So there's your efficiency rating again. 26 to 24 there. Yeah, well, oh well. It is what it is. Uh, Joe Ingles only one of six. Favors shot three threes in the game. That's kind of weird, but... Welcome to the NBA. Gosh, you would have saw Mark Eaton attempt five threes if, if Mark Eaton was playing in the NBA today. Oh, it is what it is. It's okay. As long as he makes them, then, then that's what matters. 
<laughs> Let's move into November. Happy Halloween with that uh, Halloween performance by uh, Derek Rose. He was uh, horrifying for the Utah Jazz. And then another 30-point loss against the Blazers because precautionary rest. Literally, you know what this game was? You know what the Timberwolves did to, to uh, their president of basketball and head coach who's a lot quieter and looks a little less uh, confident out there, particularly in his press conference, at least last night I noticed. This was a big fat bleep you to, to them, to their to the organization at the moment, because just get him out of here. What's this precautionary rest thing? This team is responding exactly the way you would expect pretty much in this type of situation. They're responding with a F you, we're tired of this. Even though I'm sure they would have loved to beat the Portland Trail Blazers, but I don't know. They didn't, bottom line. Portland's defense isn't good enough that it's going to keep the Wolves to 81 points. Just the, the effort wasn't there because they didn't they didn't feel good. I mean, <laughs> the whole aura around the team ain't good right now. I mean, C.J. McCollum only hit 1-3 in the game and you still lose by 30. You know, C.J. McCollum usually tortures the Wolves because, well, he was projected to come here and we just looked the past on him and all that and he's one of those guys, he's going to torch the team that passed him in the draft because how dare they. Uh, and he ended up being a lot better than we thought. Yes, he's better than Gorgi Zhang. Yes, he's a lot better than Shabazz Muhammad, for crying out loud. But uh, it is what it is there. Good uh, night for Portland, unfortunately. And, uh, well, again, another symbolic game for the Timberwolves situation with Jimmy Butler. <sighs> Anybody here thinking I'm coming out here bashing the team? No. Am I bashing the team or am I bashing the leadership? Am I bashing a guy that thinks he's the best player in the world when he's not? You can go ahead and love Jimmy Buckets. I don't even want to call him that. Start with an F. That's what he really is. Jimmy Bleepitz, because that's really what he is, because he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's no leader. Leaders don't act like that. If you, you know, just stop calling him a leader, please. Just stop it, please. That would be appreciated. Clipper time. It's Clipper Talk. Clipper Talk podcast, which used to exist from uh, Gavin Jackson out of uh, the UK. I like that show, but... Apparently he didn't like me because maybe our politics weren't 100% in agreement, but I don't care. Come on, I don't hate anybody who disagrees with me politically, unless you're a jackass, which he wasn't, so I don't know what happened there. Andrew Wiggins, 4 of 16. Well, he rebounded, and I was seeing that. He was getting a lot of key rebounds down the stretch, and I appreciated that. I have some Clippers misses, but to give up 120 points against a team that's, well, they're overachieving so far, 6 and 4. They're overachieving for what I thought they'd be. Okogi, you know, the little bit of energy, this and that. Not his best game, but not his worst. So of course, less minutes probably than you'd expect. Derrick Rose gunning again. Just gun, gun, gun. He's going to lead your team in field goal attempts this year, I think, the way it's heading. Unless his minutes go back down. Uh, it's all depending on Mr. Uh, Jeff Teague coming back from that uh, contusion situation. Jared, Jared Terrell hit a three-pointer. He's, he was uh, called up from Iowa. So I figure, I figure I'll mention his name. He's a rookie from Massachusetts. I wanted to bring him up a bit. Uh, he's from Rhode Island. Played all four years in school. So kind of cool. This is an Iowa call-up. Jared Terrell. I remember when I saw it, I was like, who the heck is Jared Terrell? Well, he's from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Number 20. No, don't you dare. He's age 23. He's a shooting guard. He can, he can shoot threes a little bit, I suppose. He's, at least he made one of two. So he's the... He's the top percentage guy right now, right? But only after one game. Played for the Iowa Wolves. He probably will go back at some point. But nice to have him around, and uh, he he did okay. So, cool. Good good for him. Got his NBA debut against Portland the other night, but in a meaningless fourth quarter that didn't go so well. Uh, this game, the Wolves were in it the whole way, and then the Clippers kind of pulled away in the second half, generally speaking. The Wolves played well most of the game, but just kind of let the Clippers slowly but surely pull away, and it was frustrating. The Wolves had some runs in them, but then the Clippers had had a, had a better run. Solid game for Carl, though. Good number of blocks in the game. That was fun to watch. Uh, 20 and 12 for his overall numbers. And again, efficiency. Look, Let's look at the efficiency again. Can I do this one more time? I know. I, I hope I'm not annoying any of you out there. Let's look at the efficiency here. How many attempts for Andrew Wiggins? 16. How many points? 13. Mm. Um, Carl Anthony Towns, 14, no, 13 attempts, 20 points. Okay. 13 for about, no, let's, let's leave that guy. I, I don't know him. Uh, Derek Rose, 20 attempts, 21 points. Still fun to watch, but whew, a little rough there, man. Kind of slow down a little bit, uh, Derek. Get a little closer to the rim or something. I don't know, because obviously he can certainly do that. Still got that quick first step, which is great, and I appreciate that. Uh, nobody played particularly well off the bench. Uh, 
I love Tyus Jones, but it wasn't his best game. He's just okay. <sighs> Taj Gibson and Beverly got in it for a minute. Next thing you know, they're loving it up, which, I don't know, that's the new NBA. It's fun to have a little bit of grudge match here and there with some guys, but oh well, welcome to the Lover League, I guess. It's the generation, I suppose. Uh, am I ever going to say his name right? Is it Tobias? I hope it's Tobias. It's not Tobias, or is it? <laughs> no, it's not Tobias. It's Tobias Harris. Good game, solid game. Wouldn't mind getting him for Jimmy Butler, but uh, I doubt it. Danilo Gallinari, you never know if he's going to stay healthy, but he'd be a good good for matching money, I suppose. But other than that, I don't really want to want him. He's just okay, and he's never never lived up to the hype as far as I'm concerned. Lou Williams isn't getting any younger, but he's one hell of a spark plug. But again, he's just like Derrick Rose, though. I mean, he's going to gun and gun and gun. He came off the bench, and he led the team in field goal attempts. So, again, need I say more? Marcin Gortat didn't play in the game, unfortunately. That's interesting. So, I don't know. Maybe we can stay away from him, I suppose. Uh, and Jimmy Butler had the laziest layup attempt, like I talked about. It was like a sixth grade layup where you just kind of go up and the ball just kind of gets trapped in the middle there and just kind of rolls down the side. And it's just lame. I mean, go up. Go show some effort. I mean, he wasn't even trying. If he was trying, the ball would have been about five or six inches higher and it would have just gone gently off the just would have gone gently off the glass into the into the rim. But no, we we can't do that. The Clippers defense is just too good, right? No, that was that was not the Clippers defense. That was Jimmy's effort there. Jimmy Jimmy efforts. That's what that was there, because he said effort there, clearly. Um so that's it for that. Uh whatever, you know. Do I have a lone wolf award for through the entire amount of time here? I if I have to give a lone wolf award to one player I'm going to actually share it with two guys, but one guy is going to get it, or one guy is going to get the, the higher version of it. It has to be Derrick Rose, even though I don't like the 9 billion field goal attempts and the 500 dribbles all the time, but uh, it kind of is what it is. It, Jimmy uh, Derrick Rose is the kind of guy that has to have the ball, unfortunately. He's not a natural catch and shoot. The Wolves need a natural catch and shoot, and we don't have one. We just don't. Um, and they're out there. There's a billion of them. There's a billion catch and shoots. DiVincenzo, who's more than capable of putting the ball on the floor, is a catch and shoot. I wouldn't mind having him, but then again, I do like the guy we did we did get. <clears throat> he's uh, obviously a factor. That's Josh Okogie. He's gonna he's gonna have like a lesser version of the Lone Wolf Award. As for the Johnny Flynn Memorial, whew, it's everything, man. It's Butler for his attitude. It's Towns for him kind of pouting a bit, uh, pretty much. And generally speaking, it's got to go to the top here. I mean, Glenn Taylor and. Uh, Tom Thibodeau not doing a damn thing about this. They're just kind of letting it go. Glenn Taylor's like a, hey, I don't get involved. I just let uh, Tom Thibodeau do his job. Oh, come on. Eventually, you got to say, hey, man, this is killing us. When a radio host by the name of Paul Allen, locally, who is known as Duckies and Bunnies because he's always Mr. Positive, like Pollyanna Allen. They actually call him that. He calls himself that on occasion. Mr. Positivity, he never wants to say anything negative. He finally lost it yesterday when they brought up the whole precautionary rest deal for precautionary butler. I'm precautionary about having him show up. I don't want him showing up. Precautionary, get the out of here, you know? And then Paul Allen said, I want nothing more to do with your team. I'm not going to watch a single game or anything until he's out of here. He actually said that. I'm paraphrasing it because I'm not saying it exactly. I'm, I'm Generally, have a good you know have a good mind here, but it doesn't matter. Generally speaking, he wants nothing more to do with the Timberwolves in any way, shape, or form until Butler's gone, and I don't blame him. And this is Pollyanna Allen saying it. Pollyanna Allen, who actually was worshiping Jimmy Butler all the way up to the last second, practically, he was calling him his favorite player in the NBA. So, think about that. Think about that. You put that together, it's over, bro. It's over, Johnny. So, with that, that's it. Butler, Thelm Thibodeau, Glenn Taylor, you are. Johnny Flynn Memorial is all right. You have as there. I feel as positively about you guys as I did about Johnny Flynn. At the end there, within a year, I was just like, get him out of here. So it is what it is. <sighs> Do you have fun? I tried to. I guess I tried. So with that, we'll take a break, preview a couple games, and then yeah, it'll be. Well, let's just go with the Lakers in Sacramento. After that, maybe I'll be back. I don't know. Maybe I'll be back on Sunday or something for a quickie. Possibly, because there's no Purple Mafia. But I'll just preview a couple. Go from there. And then some fan interaction. Glenn Taylor, for the love of God, be a leader and put an end to this nonsense. (laughs) 
And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion. It'll be a pretty short preview segment, just two games, and I don't want to go too much into it because, again, I don't know when I'm going to be back. After the two games, L.A. and Sacramento, the Timberwolves will play Brooklyn, New Orleans, and Portland. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if I'll come back on Sunday or who knows, maybe a rainy day next week. I don't know. Hopefully the rain stops and we can get all this done, and then I can have regular shows. I'll gladly sacrifice a week or so just to, you know, of doing this show, just so I can have consistent recordings after that from there on until, you know, April or so. So that'll be great. That'll be great. Minnesota hosts, nope, Minnesota visits the Los Angeles Lakers and who Jimmy Buckets wants to be showcased on ESPN 930. And I love these West Coast games. I do very much because working second shift, I can watch it live rather than having to kind of watch it back here and there. So it's not, it's more fun to watch it live. Ah, yes. <laughs> I mean, I obviously watch them back in full because there's a replay and this and that. And then I kind of continue from here and there. You can kind of stop it and come back, which is convenient in modern technology. We thank God for the technology. So let's move on. This is uh, November the 7th. Let's get to the point here. Los Angeles Lakers. I forget who they acquired in the offseason. There's some guy. He's just getting a little older, but he's ageless, just like Tom Brady. And, well, unfortunately for him, he needs a couple more titles to get to Tom Brady's uh, level. But um, Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson of this day and age, just switched the numbers around. Unfortunately, the Lakers couldn't beat the Raptors most recently. They've won two out of their last five, including one of the losses was Minnesota, at Minnesota, of course, at San Antonio, and hosting the Toronto Blue Jay Raptors. The Lakers recently beat Dallas, and then Portland. That's a pretty good one. Um, That's good. So back-to-back situation, though hosting Toronto, going from Portland to back to L.A. I guess that's not that far. You just go down the West Coast. But anyhow, JaVale McGee, he's having a pretty nice return. Mr. Uh, Mr. Shaq a fool himself. He's doing good. I mean, the last couple of years, JaVale McGee's been buried on benches, like the Warriors, the Nuggets, this and that. Well, he had some good years with the Nuggets. Uh, I can't even remember half the team as he's been on. He's been all over the place. But JaVale McGee is doing pretty good with the Lakers, isn't he, Vince? Um, Vince, a uh, pretty good supporter of him of late. Brandon Ingram looks like a future star, though he's missed four games so far this year. Kyle Kuzma is that, you know, that underdog draft pick. What a wonderful turnout he's been. 19 points a game, and of course LeBron's averaging about oh, 27 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists, and uh, 2 steals. I mean, that's Magic Johnson all over the place. Not quite Magic's assist numbers, but still, the value is very much there. All of you worshipping Michael Beasley like he's the coolest guy in the world. Yeah, he's played 3 games and Average three minutes in a, in the game. So, I don't know, man. I don't know why everyone's on that guy's jock. I'm not impressed, and I never will be. <laughs> Obviously, it's too late to be impressed now. Lonzo Ball still developing, still kind of in and out. Caldwell Pope's getting paid $18 million a year to not even have, to barely average 18 minutes a game. Um, whatever, man. 21% from downtown. Ball's making 41 at least, so that's good. Uh, Rondo is looking f- fairly solid for the, the Lakers, but I don't know. We all kind of know how that ends. He always gets freaking hurt now. So that's disappointing in that sense. Stevenson's a fun player to watch, and a lot of us in here in town wish uh, the Wolves kept him. In L.A., I don't know what to make of this one. Well, Butler will play, so the Wolves will probably win. I think the Wolves will win the game, I think. Um, I don't know, though. It, it's so unpredictable. I mean, remember the Wolves' history in Staples Center? I mean, you don't have to be that old to remember how horrible, <laughs> how horrible things that always wind up in Staples Center. You have a good three quarters, you're feeling good about yourself, you're up by 10, and you lose by 20, you know, or 18 or something like that. Of course, that was in the Kobe era, but even when they weren't that good, weird things would happen. Clarkson would start going off and other guys. Well, Clarkson's gone, but now you've got LeBron James. That's slightly different. Uh, Clarkson's in Cleveland and LeBron's in Los Angeles. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Both teams are kind of equal in terms of their record right now. Butler's going to play. I don't care. Just go away. I don't want him to play. I don't care. You know, great. You might win a game because some guy that's not going to be here is going to be here. You know, what's the point of that? Let's win a game with our guys, just like the Wolves did against the Golden State Warriors last year. Of course, Curry was out, but again, Butler was out. And back then, we didn't know what Butler, just how big of a cancer he was. Because back then, the Wolves won more games with Jimmy Butler because a lot of that wasn't really out there yet. Um, So, I don't know what to make of all of it. Uh, The Wolves beat the Warriors, you know, in that game, and it was a beautiful night. 
I'd like to see it done with our guys. Oh, boy. Uh, it's a very winnable game. It's fun to watch. I kind of think the Lakers... I kind of think the Lakers are going to win. I don't know. But, well, let's let's go one and one. I think Minnesota's going to win this one. It's the next game that I'm worried about, to be quite frank. I don't know. We don't play well against those guys lately. Um, I think the Wolves do win on national television. I think Butler gets upper 20s. But I really want to believe that Carl's the best player in the game. Maybe Wiggins has a nice showing, like 20-ish. You're going to need a game like that. You know, Butler to have his nice game. I don't even want to mention his name on this show anymore. Just talking about him on the opposing team, maybe because he shot one of 30. That would be great, but I don't think that's going to happen either. But uh, that would be great. <sighs> I want to believe Carl's going to get 30-ish. I mean, he usually plays pretty good in L.A. He's had some good games there in the past. Wiggins has had some moments, but it's generally Towns. I think Butler's going to again try to showcase himself. Self, sorry. Just don't get hurt so he can't trade you. That would be appreciated. More reason to, again, have him just go home and go away and just go work out, whatever, and get ready for your next team. Mm. Derek Rose, whatever. I mean, he'll, he'll he'll have his moments here and there, but it's going to be about Carl and, and Jimmy in this game. Upper 20s, low 30s. I think Minnesota's going to barely beat the Lakers in a very close game. LeBron's going to get in the mid-30s, I think. I, I just have that feeling LeBron's going to have a really nice night, maybe a triple-double, but Minnesota's going to somehow win the game. Like, final score, 128, 126, something like that. Very entertaining national broadcast type of game. Everybody's going to show up and play well in this one. Minnesota will barely outlast the Portland Trailblazers, the Portland Trailblazers, the Los Angeles Lakers, and it won't be because anybody hit a clutch shot in the game, unless maybe like say somebody like Derrick Rose like hurls up a three at you know late and puts the Wolves ahead, something like that. But obviously you're going to want the energy from Josh Okogi, this and that. I just have a feeling the Wolves will outlast the Lakers. Maybe they'll have a nice lead and they'll have to kind of go with the Lakers into a missed shot, this and that. I don't feel particularly good about this one, but I don't necessarily want the Wolves to go 0-2 this week. I'm not going to pick that. I have a feeling they'll go 1-1 and in the next two games. But Minnesota, 128-126, barely, and I mean barely beating the Lakers. And just to annoy uh, Vince and, and uh, Stu and Kalen out there, who are, of course, Laker fans in Australia. Sacramento Kings are looking decent. They're 6-4 and in the Pacific Division which obviously has the same division champion every flicking year, much to my chagrin. They're getting better, and they are getting better. And Buddy Hild actually looks like a good player now. Um, wow. After kind of sucking and being mediocre the last couple of years, Buddy Hield, welcome to the NBA, Buddy Hield. You look legitimate now. About 20 points, 48% from downtown. Who's this Nemanja guy averaging 14 points and 54% from downtown? Even Iman Shumpert is shooting 40.5% 40, 40 from downtown. What the flip? Yeah, the Wolves aren't going to win this one. That's why I picked the Wolves to beat the Lakers, because I don't want the, I, I don't want to believe they're going to go 0-2 this week, though they might, possibly. De'Aaron Fox, obviously a, a guy... That was uh, acquired via the draft, of course. We all know that. High draft pick for Sacramento. And that's what's good about having a high draft pick. Wow, look at Ben McLemore. Remember what he was supposed to be? Ah, wow. Very bottom there. Less than five minutes a game in five games. Not even a point a game on average. Willie Cauley-Stein, not worthy of his position in the draft, but still a very valuable glue guy. Defense and rebounding. And he's scoring about 16 points a game. So it's not like he's bad, but he's not this... You know, guy, some of us thought thought he was going to be. Nemanja is a perfect fit in Sacramento. Things are working really nice. They're young, exciting, and improving. They'd won four in a row before running into the freight train known as Milwaukee. Jeez. The Milwaukee Bucks might win the Eastern Conference. I mean, they might. I might be picking the wrong team. The, the, the wrong green jerseys here to win the Eastern Conference. I picked the Celtics. 144 to 109? Are you serious? After Sacramento scored 146 against, well, the hapless Hawks. Well, yeah, that's not a very good couple of teams there, Orlando, but they still won the games. I mean, you got to win them, and they're on the road. Road games in the Southeast, I don't know, they don't seem to go well for the Wolves, even when we were pretty good. Milwaukee, 144-109. Holy mother. Uh, I don't think the Wolves are going to beat the Kings, though. Uh, clearly, this team can score. I have a feeling it's going to be one of those not-so-good nights. It's not going to be a good night. I think the Wolves are going to get crushed. And I'm not saying it to be a jackass. Look at the freaking pattern. Have you noticed a pattern here? You have a good game or so, and then you lose by 25, 30 points. So I think the Wolves lose by 25, 30 points. Let's go with 120, 100, just to be gentle here. 
121, nah, nah, 125. It's like 125 to 95, right? No, 125 to 100. Let's, let's just be gentle. The Wolves are going to score some points against Sacramento because that's the other pattern. Sacramento gives up points, too. I mean, look look at the teams they beat. 112, 113. Only Orlando got 99. And then 115 by Atlanta. 109 by, by, the, by the, well, Kings versus the Bucks. Sorry. Um, Wolves are going to score points. They'll score 100. But again, you know, it's not going to be a good feeling. Sacramento wins by 25. And again, it's because of the pattern. So it's not because the Wolves suck and they, they're going to get crushed by everybody. It's because it's a pattern, and this is exactly what's going to happen. They'll come back and say, yep, Joey was right. Or maybe I will be wrong, but I don't think so on this one. So that's kind of where I stand at this point. Wolves go one and one. Let's get to fan interaction and wrap this sucker up. We are back here on Timberwolves Explosion Fan Interaction segment number three and final segment of this episode. Let's get to the Twitter account at Wolves Explosion. At Wolves Explosion, please do give that a follow. I want to thank Tene Brown, Levi Brown, and Vince Germano for retweeting the last episode, which was episode one, uh, excuse me, 235, <clears throat> the season preview. So, yeah, it's been a little while, kind of late, mid to late October there. So now we try to move forward a bit. Lots of stuff. Uh, in the way here. Uh, yep. I was saying a Warriors fans are really annoying. You're not going to get a call every single time. Vince Germano posts, I have no words, as he was uh, posting the video of Jimmy Butler waving the towel with the Warriors fans, and it was just kind of silly. <laughs> it was silly. Jimmy Butler has not played for the Warriors. Uh, Vince Germano says, knob of a bloke. Yep. Vince Germano out of Australia, Tony Brown out of New Zealand, along with his brother Levi Brown. Tene Brown says, rest of the team should refuse to play until he's traded. Everyone's sitting due to general soreness. Yeah, that's exactly, you know, once a team does that, like if the whole team does that, then then they have to do something. It's like, seriously, though, um, it's extremely frustrating. I thought I said something, too. I think I did. Uh, Maybe I just responded to Vince uh, generally. I can't remember. I think I did. Yep, that's weird. I thought I, I thought I responded to him, just for the fact of trying to be uh, interacting here. Uh, I guess I. That's strange. I think I just reacted. Yeah, I think I might have responded to him in the uh, chat, Facebook chat. That must be why. Okay, so that's the end of the Twitter. Going to give a quick shout out to the Flips Army group on Facebook. Flips Army recommend you to go there and give that a like. Join the page, in-game threads and such, uh, Wolves conversation, stay away from Warriors conversation. Oh, I'm just kidding. Whatever. Talk about whatever you want. I'm not going to, I'm not going to join any conversation about a team that's not, I, that's not interesting to me. So <laughs> let's move forward to the Facebook page. Great uh, page though. Join Flips Army. Also join the Timberwolves Explosion Facebook page if you could. Facebook.com forward, Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion. It's that simple. Look it up and I will have links to this one and the Twitter account in the show description so you can get there right away. Or, or of course, just look it up and join the page if you could. De- definitely appreciate those of you that have. Vince Germano, responding to my last show, I believe I was talking about Rubio and the trade and everything. Uh, Vince Germano says, here's where I was coming from in regards to me thinking Rubio being traded out was Thib's biggest mistake. Yeah, that's what it was. He says, yes, Levine and Markin are probably more talented than than what what Rubio does. Okay, sorry. He's saying they're more talented, but what Rubio does is bring guys together. And by that, I'm talking on and off the court. He is never looking for his first for his shot first and a team with as many weapons as the Wolves had. You didn't need a Jeff Teague. Yeah, yeah because Teague is more looking for his shot, right? Yep, he says, I'm a Teague fan, but not for the Wolves. What Rubio brought and... What he's bringing, uh, what he's now bringing to the Jazz, you just can't buy. There is so much more I could say, but that's the gist of it. Yeah, I, I was saying the same thing before. I understand, too. I, I completely understand that. It was probably the predictability that was bugging me a little bit. Like when it's like, okay, Rubio's going to pass, and then people would cut off the passing lane, and then either Rubio would have to force a, up a, a yucky shot or a uh, turnover, that type of thing. The predictability got old for me a little bit. That was part of the problem. 
I don't hate Ricky Rubio. Just some of that got frustrating uh, during the course of time, and that's why a lot of guys were thinking he's not the kind of guy that could really do something for you in the playoffs. Uh, I was saying how I apologize. I didn't see you this comment until now. Yeah, because I replied a little later. I would have said something sooner. You do make a valuable point. Rubio definitely developed a nice three-point shot. Yep, yep. And that would, that would have been helpful for us right now, the catch and shoot and all that as well. Uh, so far this year, though, Rubio's not having a good year. But generally speaking, especially last year, he was great. I was saying clearly Tyus Jones had worked on his three-point shot in the offseason. That guy has... No, this is like a, a different post. Has a wonderful catch and shoot. Shooting over 45% from downtown so far this year. Thoughts. And that was very early. Unfortunately, it's come down to about 36 since then. Levi Brown replied to that and said, that was where I most wanted improvement from last year. For, he, he wanted it for it so long, and he was hoping that, uh, that it would continue. It's like, may that continue? Without a doubt, unfortunately, it seemed like it's, it's done. And that's where the frustrating side begins. Uh, Andrew Wigan on his injury says, this is nothing. That was, again, the... Uh, that was the thigh contusion. So that was something that was kind of a frustration for all of us a bit. He missed a good number of games, but, yeah, you know, wow, I'm seeing snow flurries. That's what's distracting me right now. It's snow flurrying. Huh. Wow, the temperature's really dropping. You in Australia that complained about it being a little colder, it's snow flurrying here. So, <laughs> yep. Uh, Levi Brown says Wiggins and Towns' durability has been very impressive, and there's no doubt about it. Wayne Hunt of the Courtside Podcast says he's done. Trade him, LOL. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Uh, but Wiggins, yeah, he's been he's been very durable. It's hard to believe he actually missed a significant amount of time for first time ever. About three, three or four games. That's a lot for him. And there it is, the Wolves' uh, new jersey. The new city jersey for this year, and probably beyond, is it's going to have that purple rain. It's going to have a purple rain inspiration to it. Uh, kind of an 80s style look font with the nice purple colors and all that. It looks, yeah, it definitely looks 80s, kind of like Miami in the 80s or just 80s in general, regardless of where you're from. And it, it looks pretty cool. Um, TJ, uh, T- Tene Brown says, brilliant. And TJ Hollis says, yes, yes, and more yes. A few more replies coming up. TJ Hollis was calling for a couple other guys mentioning them. Uh, Brennan Kirkman says, not purple enough, but awesome all the same. And Trent Holleran says, awesome. Yes, they're black with kind of a squiggly 80s looking font uh, and purple. The font, of course, is purple. The number is in the, and it says wolves. So it looks good. I'm I'm a fan of it for the most part. And they'll, be, they'll have it a few games this year. So I was saying three years ago today, this is October 25th, Flip Saunders was no longer with us. God bless him and remember him today. Please forgive the late post. I meant to post this hours ago. Kenny Brown says, if only we could have seen his vision come to life. And Luke Rasmussen says, it seems like it's been longer than three years. And it, it does in some ways. In other ways, you can't believe it's been that, that quick. Uh, but uh, Flip Saunders, in honor of him, I will give him a moment of silence. God bless Phillips Honors. Three years already. Uh, miss you very much and wish uh, wish you were still leading this franchise. A lot of things wouldn't be going on that are today, I'll tell you that. Uh, I was saying, Mr. Tom Thibodeau, stop denying the inevitable. The report was Jimmy Butler is now sitting out games so the Timberwolves will trade him. And that is exactly what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Vince Germano says, I wish Thibs. And of course, Vince Germano is a part of the Courtside Podcast as well, along with Stu Benson, with, with Wayne Hunt leading the way there. Vince Germano says, I wish Thibs would... Would have pulled the trigger on the Miami deal. Richardson is playing really well. Might be a little harder to get him now, but I'm sure he's still doable. It's still doable. Uh, Wayne Hunt says, I don't know that Houston deal looks better to me. The one thing about the Houston deal, see, it's four first-round picks. And and, and I didn't even talk about it because all the other stuff going on. It's four first-round picks, but they stretch out over the course of about 10 years or so. But, you know, hey, it's something to look forward to. It wouldn't kill me to do it. The The unattractive part was the yucky contracts you'd have to bring back in return, like Brendan Knight and such. That's That was the unattractive part. I still kind of like it. Uh, I'd love to have Josh Richardson, though. That'd be great. I'd still do the Houston deal, possibly, but maybe if you could just, you know, if only you could get Eric Gordon instead of one of those icky contracts, that would be nice. I mean, it's not like Gordon's contract is the cheapest thing of all time, either. So, still, you know, that's how you can still match the money and figure that out, but... um here we are still waiting. I posted how Derek Rose scored the career-high 50 points and an emotional win without Jimmy Butler. Vince Germano says, where are those Wolves fans who were hating? T- 
Tom, Tom Lodge says, uh, he mentioned Ian Bully. So that's cool. Kind of bringing somebody to check that out. Uh, and then I was saying, this is what being a leader is all about. Jimmy Butler missed the Portland game because of precautionary rest, and Levi Brown had an angry face. Yep, and totally understandable. And, man, it was extremely frustrating, and I discussed that earlier. But uh, very, very frustrating. I wish I posted that sooner so I could have gotten more response, but it is what it is. I mean, maybe there really isn't much more to say other than just being ticked off at the situation. That's pretty much where we stand today. So that pretty much should wrap things up. Uh, again, the Houston deal, it would stretch out over the course of about 10 years, but still, still, it's something to look forward to. It wouldn't be 10, like seven years. But yeah, it's like every other year. It's something to look forward to, though, regardless if it's protected or whatever. It's a valuable piece. You can package it in this trade, or you can keep it for this. You can keep it. I mean, you can get a Josh Akogi. You can get somebody of value with those picks. Houston's not going to be good forever, by the way. Chris Paul's getting older. Uh, Carmelo Anthony, well, he's whatever. He is what he is. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. Okay, Vince does a little bit sometimes. And he has played well of late for the Houston Rockets. Good for him. But um, still, those picks aren't, you know, to think it's a little bit later pick doesn't mean it's junk. It really doesn't. I mean, love him or hate him, <laughs> Jimmy Butler was the last pick in the first round. Uh, so many players were taken later in the draft. So many. Darren Carlson was a nice, valuable piece. He was taken later in the draft. Ty Lawson was a valuable piece taken later in the draft. Nobody's excited about them now, but hey, who's to say? Certain guys, they stick and they get better. So there's nothing wrong with uh, fairly later picks. They're still first-round picks. They still have value. And four of them adds up. It adds up, and it, it's a good thing. Again, it's just a yucky contract you'd have to get back. So, And we all know how God. Tom Thibodeau thinks. He doesn't want to think about the future. He wants to think about now, now, and now. So that's kind of Tom Thibodeau at this stage. With that, let's wrap up this show. Did my best, right? I did my best. I hope you uh, enjoyed what I had to say. Kind of getting caught up and basically just saying, getting everything off my chest for the most part of the Jimmy Butler situation. You just throw your hands up. I mean, it's hard to get excited right now because of what's going on, and you don't know what the future holds. You just don't know. So you just sit around and hope that it ends soon. Hope the nonsense ends and we can start moving forward with our new player, our players, and uh, and or look forward to the draft as well because there's got to be at least one first-round pick, right, included. There has to be. I hope it's not just cash and uh, players. That, and that's it. you got to get a draft pick. You have to get at least one out of this. So it's something to look forward to in that sense. With that, I'll get to the contact details. Again, you can, of course, get a hold of me on the Facebook page, the Twitter account that I mentioned before. That'll be in the show description. Again, at Wolves Explosion and Facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion. The call now, or the call button anyway, is 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Mention you're calling in for Timberwolves Explosion to your statement, shout out, comment, question, and opine. That one's three a three minute limit because it's just how it's a natural fa- uh, voicemail, so that's how that rolls. And then you have the audio submission rule, which I highly recommend. There's no limit, and you're in full control of it. You can use your phone. Any smart device in this world has a free recording application, voice recording application, anyway. Record it, maybe keep it to five minutes, but it could be longer depending on whatever you have to say. I'm sure very few of you are going to make it much longer than that, but if you want to, you can. Uh, record it, save it, and send it to Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. Paladino Live at Yahoo.com. I will then convert it into an MP3 file thanks to Zumzar.com, and there you go. It'll be a great feeling. There's also the Call Now button on the Facebook page. Just click on that. That goes straight to the phone line. But again, I always recommend the audio submission route because it comes directly to me. The voicemail actually goes to Dylan Richardson who then sends it to me. So there's a little bit of a middleman situation. Eh, but it's not that big of a problem either way. It's all up to you, your comfort, and what you uh, prefer. I honestly think the voice uh, audio submission is way higher quality. It, it really is. It's way higher quality. So I say go that direction. With that, I want to wish all of you a good week or two until the next show. And of course, a good month of good month of November and Thanksgiving, depending on how long this takes to record again. The situation, heck, it might not be till Black Friday for all we know. But uh, we'll get this show out by Black Friday at the latest, I got to think. Other than that, hopefully we'll be back sooner. And hopefully Jimmy Butler is no longer a member of the Timberwolves next time I am behind the microphone. Thank you.